<clears throat> yes, my name is Kevin Mattis. I'm the Outreach Director for the California Brain Tumor Association. And um, I spend my time full time um, here in Washington, D.C., educating legislators regarding the health effects, the biological and health effects from wireless radiation. And uh, part of our team is cancer epidemiologists, toxicologists, cellular biologists, all the people that um, the FCC do not employ. As a matter of fact, the FCC does not even have a health department. Um, and the uh, working around of health effects from wireless technology is really a sad chapter um, in the history of this country. Um, and frankly, there's no nice way to say this. Uh, the wireless industry is lying um, about health, and they're lying about this technology and how it needs to be implemented. And coming from California, we have more insight because they're already beginning to install, so we know more about it. Um, but I think this video is important um, because it's one of... Well, wait a second now. Um, do we have the capacity to get that shown? No? It's okay. It's only 30 seconds. Okay. But I'm getting wavelengths that are bothering me. I'm kidding. It's downloaded. I think, uh, I think what's important about this Verizon advertisement for 5G is they make it very clear that their technology can travel very easily 3,000 feet. So that's more than half a mile. So what that means is they do not need to locate these transmitters so close to people. They need, do not need to locate them so close together to each other um, and uh, not so close to human beings and other living things that will be uh, affected by it. Um, so they're really lying about the implementation of this technology. If um, Councilwoman, if you look at this brochure here, this is from um, Verizon themselves, and this is regarding their insurance for their wireless devices. And what it says is we do not uh, cover emissions uh, or pollutants emitted by our wireless technology. But what's really interesting about this brochure is they define wireless radiation in all its terms as a pollutant themselves. And they say here, uh, they do not cover and they exclude coverage for pollution, the discharge, dispersal, seepage, migration, or escape of pollutants. Pollutants mean any solid, liquid, gaseous, or thermal irritant or contaminant including smoke, vapor, soot, fumes, acid, alkalines, chemicals, artificially produced electric fields, magnetic fields, electromagnetic fields, sound waves, microwaves, and all artificially produced ionizing or non-ionizing radiation or waste. So what's interesting is they define wireless radiation as a pollutant when it comes to them covering uh, and protecting themselves in terms of liability. But when they want to force it into our communities and blanket our communities with wireless radiation, supposedly it's safe. And I ask you, Councilwoman, that the count that all of the representatives from the wireless industry be asked very specifically to state on the record that this wireless technology is safe for the health and safety of our residents. I want that on record because according to their own printed literature, that's not the case. And that's a big issue because working around health effects, known health effects, is really the MO. Whether it's the FCC order which says that we have streamlining so we don't want to consider health environmental issues at all um, so they can just work around it. And what really concerns me very much is that what we're not talking about is that we are talking about implementation and that in the signing of the MLAs, the public was not included. The normal process was not included. Our elected officials were not included. That cannot be the normal due process in this city, but that's what's happening. And if people are really so eager to have this technology and it's so great, why not include the community's input? Why not have their input on what's going on? Now, another lie of the industry, and there's no other way to say it, is that these are going to be small cells and they won't be too bothersome to the community. This is in California. This is what it looks like when they, in this is what it looks like, upside down, when they install and what the plan is to be 4G. This is going to be 4G and then they're going to put a 5G on top of it and that's the power source that can be the size of two refrigerators and you can see it's about 15 feet from this woman's home. There is no way this woman doesn't get sick either short term with neurological or and long term where, with cancer. where is this picture? Could you? In Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. Yeah, and it's in the, um, 
It's, you can find it in an article. I can send you the article. Okay. Um, but so w what we have is the industry clearly lying to public representatives, which should, which should outrage you enough that you stop the process and you start over again, because this is a forcing and workaround, and that is the MO. And what you need to understand is no wireless device, and 5G included, is safety tested before it's put on market. No antenna is safety tested before it's put on market. They only have to fall under an exposure guideline that is a thermal guideline only, which means you're only guaranteed not to be heated or burned by your phone or your antenna. Anything below that over time isn't covered, and that's where the real health effects are. The reality is this is the greatest environmental and safety threat of our time, and instead of fighting back and pushing back, especially when we have safe alternatives like wired fiber optic to the home, we are spending millions and billions and just showing the way to the industry of taking advantage of us. This is when we need our representatives to represent. This is when we need our representatives to push back. And it can't just be you, it has to be the entire council. This is truly wrong. You can only microwave radiate people so much. And what you'll see in my packet is a report from the Army on millimeter waves looking at 350 studies showing clear biological effects below thermal, below our safety guidelines. And what's interesting about this report is they said the, subject of the subjects of these studies 30 to 80 percent of them were aware of it because our skin and our eyes are going to absorb a disproportionate amount of this wireless radiation. So you're talking about serious effects to our skin and our nerves invenerate our skin, so you're talking about affecting our entire neurological system and exposing our eyes to military-grade wireless radiation, and our eyes have no natural defense against this. So you're talking about putting this in front of people's homes, forcing it into their um, rooms. This is absolutely absurd. We have video from the FCC proceedings with one of the 5G engineers saying themselves, look, we are forcing these, these directed beams into people's windows at, at levels that we do not allow in our labs, in our safety labs. This is absolutely absurd, and the FCC shrugged it off and said, this isn't an issue we need to be discussing today. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, I, uh, I really think uh, this committee is not in a position to evaluate what 5G, where 5G is in its development, until somebody clarifies that, uh, why we need it, and uh, when we need it. Um, I see you have your hand raised, I'm gonna go to you next. Uh, and then on top of that, um, whether all of these limitations that uh, might be put on it are not feasible. Why not alleyways? Why not on roofs? Why not limitations in terms of where it's sited in any event? And will it really just enhance uh, communication on the street and not anything in the homes? Um, I think these questions have to be answered in addition to the ones about what other ill effects may be caused. But um, as yet, and I guess this is for our um, telecom companies when they come forward, but also, um, uh, Mr. Modis, you have some views about this, so I'd like to hear them. Those are excellent, those are, uh, I'll just, uh, those are excellent questions. What's very important to understand is we already have 98% coverage in terms of communication between people. This is about the Internet of Things, things communicating with each other. And I would say we don't really need 5G. A matter of fact, most of the, the capabilities they're talking about for 5G can be done through 4G and maybe even better. There's great limit, limit, limits uh, in terms of the millimeter waves. That's why they haven't been used for decades. There's all kinds of problems with them. Um, and in order for the millimeter waves to work, they're going to have to put tremendous force behind them. And this tremendous force, and that's why you saw that huge power source over here, um, uh, becomes very problematic because as you increase these powers, you have certain biological effects, none of which are being taken into account. And when in doubt, we should leave it out. This is really, just like you're seeing here, about industry having their way, working around the process, and this is not really what people want. And what you know is, uh, you probably know already, the National League of Cities is opposing uh, the small cells uh, rollout, as is the League of Mayors. So, there are great concerns about this. The only ones who seem to really want 5G 
are the industry that are going to be benefiting. And how are they going to be benefiting? When they put a transmitter in front of your home, the, de the design is it's going to be collecting data from up to 500 transmitters in your home. And they're going to be selling that data to the highest bidder, like they, Facebook does. This far, in terms of value, this far surpasses uh, the wireless services themselves. That's why they're willing to spend $300 billion rolling it out. But what it does in the same time is seriously and intimately violate your privacy. The other issue is cybersecurity. With all these transmitters collecting information on us wirelessly, we know that wireless transmissions are easily hacked and uh, there's cybersecurity problems. So you're talking about violating uh, people's privacy in a very intimate way, jeopardizing the cybersecurity of our nation, and exposing us to intense millimeter wave radiation in addition to the current radiation that we have now. And uh, Councilwoman, I think it's very important to understand that with 4G, you're going to be putting these transmitters, which used to be located miles away from people, very close to the home, like here. And those transmissions are designed to travel miles. And the beginning of that trip is going to be going through residents very close by. These 4G transmitters have absolutely no place so close to people's homes. The 5G transmitters, uh, while they're designed for shorter transmissions, you could understand why they would be located closer, but not this this close to humans, but the 4G transmitters, and while our studies show that wireless radiation is clearly carcinogenic, neurotoxic, and genotoxic, they only look at one source, and these studies are very carefully uh, designed to only consider one source, but what you're talking about here is now two sources, very strong sources, lower frequencies and higher frequencies, hitting people with a soup of wireless microwave radiation. So our bodies certainly are not designed to adapt to any of this. And the reason why low frequencies and these high frequencies are such a problem is we're electromagnetic. Our cells are electromagnetic. We, our cells communicate, reproduce, and, and, and reproduce and, and transmit electromagnetically. The idea that these billions of waves per second passing through our body are not going to have an effect on us is true fantasy. They absolutely have an effect on us. Thank we are electromagnetic. So is our heart and brain. Okay, thank you very much. Um, did you say that the National League of Cities and the League of Mayors oppose 5G technology, or is it just that they oppose the FCC's order? Um, they're opposing the FCC order, but specifically they're opposing S3157, which is a bill from Senator Thune, which is going to um, shorten the, the shot clocks, streamline, and then, by the way, if you get sick near a wireless transmitter, okay, but, you have to go back to the... But my question was pretty s straightforward. Okay. Are they opposing the 5G technology, or are they just opposing the um, FCC order and perhaps this bill that has not been passed? Both, but that bill only pertains to 5G and small cells. Okay, so but therefore, they, uh, they oppose 5G transmitters. That, that bill only concerns itself with the rollout of 5G. Okay, that's true that that's the subject, but do they oppose 5G technology as such, per se? Based on their opposition with 3157, that is to facilitate 5G, I would say yes, they do. And we do know that they're opposing um, the FCC order. No, I know that, okay. but I wanted to find out, because I thought FCC you said they were opposing 5G But the FCC technology. order is specifically about small cell rollout, too. I know that. Well, I could, I could have something that's about dogs, but then if I uh, worry about a regulation about dogs, doesn't mean I'm opposed to dogs. Uh -huh. So there's a distinction. But okay. Uh, I hear I what you're saying. To, I and just then wanted to check that. One thing I didn't mention was uh, Dr. Beatrice Gollum from California, where I'm from, who's an expert in electromagnetic radiation health effects, wrote a letter regarding the rollout of small cells, and she cited 360 scientific citations pointing to the biological and health effects. This is a current professor expert in the field. Could um, we have a copy of that? Could you give That's give in it? your packet. Okay. I just didn't have a chance to mention it along with the Army report. I think it's very illuminating. And, and for then, the industry then, to say... And then, okay, because like, you can't go on and on. Um, the other thing is, in my packet, is there also a copy of that insurance uh, form that you made reference to? Because I'd like to have that as well. Yes, uh, okay. one from AT&T as well. Okay, perfect. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you much for having this hearing and yes. asking such good questions. Okay, well, you've been, you want to add one thing? You were saying, yeah, one you were saying thing. that, you, well, you, you were saying that. ...damages our cells. 
So um, we have the mechanism, we have the scientists saying it's a problem, the FCC saying it's safe without a health department or health professionals, and we know they're a captured agency. We have the industry pushing this. I very much want you to ask them to go on record in saying this technology is safe for our women, our children, our families that are going to be exposed to this, because they know it's not safe. They're protecting themselves in terms of liability, but they have no interest in protecting us. This is outrageous. This is the the most important function of local government to protect our health and safety, and it's being called into action now. Thank you. And thank you all for your testimony.